Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I want to show you something new that I learned about debugging with Bitwig. So you will learn how to debug with Bitwig and why it is cool, why it is even better than debugging in other DOS. But before doing that I will show you the usual case. You want to debug in a DAW, in one of the normal DAWs like Cubase or Reaper or FL Studio or Studio One because it works for all of these DAWs. Yeah, let's say Cubase, because I already have that here, selected in my debugging section of, of this solution, the VSD3 solution. So when I run this now, it will compile the plugin and then it will run Cubase. It has skipped the compiling step because I already compiled this project. But typically it would take quite some time to compile. Like if I had a new variable here, say I just want to try something a little bit differently, some um, really important calculation but I'm not sure yet if it works it's just something that I try and I want to build this again then suddenly it will take a long time to build everything again even if you're just in debug mode it's kind of annoying now this was still pretty fast but it does can take longer when like the project is very big which this project isn't yeah and then it even has to load up the door and then you can select a project where you hopefully already have some states prepared for your plugin and environment that you can work with to figure out some problems that you want to think about or to get a feeling for the processes that you implemented to check if it's cool. But now you might want to instead just want to keep the door open while debugging. Well, that is entirely possible. Let us open Bitwig Studio. Then there you have a project where you want to test some stuff. And I have this project with this little kick drum and this little pad. And now I want to instantiate my plugin, which I just do. And then it's here. And it's doing its thing. It's currently a very subtle thing. So you can barely hear it, but um, it's definitely doing something. Now you might want to attach a debugger and that works by pressing CTL Alt and P in Visual Studio. And then there is this very annoying looking um, window, which forces you to either scroll to the right a lot or make these things smaller so that you can touch this thing. And only then, you can scroll out to the right again to see which of the processes is the one of your plugin. So this is the, the worst workflow that I ever saw in Visual Studio. Like what is the, what is this? Do I care about the ID? Do I care about whether or not this, okay, I, I might care about if, if, if this is Bitwig at all, but what is this? Do I care about Bitwig again? No. Do I care? about um, whether or not this is 64-bit? No. Do I care about where, whatever this means, like if this is the, my computer or, or whatever? Uh, no. Do I care about the session, which is always the same apparently? No. So Visual Studio Devs, if, if you're watching this video, I, I think you don't because this is a very niche YouTube channel. But if any of you Visual Studio guys see this, why don't you just improve this? I only want to know what is the process that I want to click at, which is my plugin. And I don't know what the other stuff is used for, but I mean the, the most important stuff should just be the thing that you see immediately, right? Now, anyway, let's go on. So you select your plugin and attach it and now it runs. Now you can debug certain stuff. Theoretically, if you had some debug messages in your code now, then they will also normally show in the console. I did not put any here. That's maybe something that can happen that you compile the project and then the door starts up and you realize, oh, damn, I have forgotten something. I need to go back again. So the easy solution for that is now you can just go into Bitwig on the track where you have your plugin, press Alt A to unload all the plugins on the channel and yeah, it has 
even unloaded vital so we can even not hear the pad so all the plugins are currently not in this project but the cool thing is their state is still there you cannot see it but if you were to load them again then their state from before would come back but this gives us now the possibility to change something about the code for example here i could just um, dbg out these um, values and then I could compile again, of course, not with the play symbol because that would open Cubase now, but just by pressing rebuild solution. Now it will build and of course build times are still something that can be annoying, but it's still better than as if I had to reopen the door again, you know. Now it has successfully built and we can go back here and press Alt A again to activate all these plugins again and now they have loaded with the same settings as before in visual studio i can now use this annoying process again where i scroll to this stuff and then try to figure out what's my process finally now we should see it dbg out and it um, works so that's a very cool workflow to debug plugins in Bitwig. Now let's actually try to break something. Um, for example, all I want to do now is access some uh, ridiculous index. And now rebuild the solution. Now obviously if we run this code now, this would throw an insert in the plugin. So that it cannot continue to work. How will we handle the situation? That's a very important question because when something is crashing, then you would think it's cool if the door can handle that and will not crash as well. Now let's go. Boom. And we got an assertion fail. Now we cannot hit reply because we haven't yet instantiated the debugger. But it would be interesting to see if we can do that. All right, so now we have the process and the message. And yeah, it can uh, yield us the point of no return. Now we know what the issue is and we can try to continue. But we run into the same problem over and over again, of course. And what's going on in Bitwig now? Bitwig just does not play what's on this track at the moment because of the plugin. And if we take the plugin out again, then it works again. But Bitwig does not crash. Let's get rid of this again and recompile. And in the meantime, I show you where that talked because it's Bitwig. Oh, cool! Yeah, you can. You even get a little error message showing that crashed and then could try to reload them i want i don't want to reload them thanks now what i wanted to show you is that in your plugins list in the settings you can go to the plugins that you can want to be more careful about when it comes to their processes like the ones that you make yourself and you can select them and that will automatically make them be in individual mode and as you can read it means individual sandboxes are created for each instance of each plugin used this is the most memory intensive option but the safest so there can be shared memory in all of the other modes for example in my plugin Nell, you can change the color scheme and it's shared memory because when I want to change the color of one plugin, it should also change the color of the, of the other instances of the plugin and so on. So it makes sense to have this set to at least by manufacturer or by, by plugin maybe in most cases. But for things where you want to be really safe, like stuff that are currently in the middle of development, you can just set them to individual sandboxes here. And then it's cool. Now let's disable all plugins here and enable them again and let's go. Because obviously it has compiled again, right? So that, that's why it now worked again. And yeah, 
that's the Bitwig workflow and really apart from this thing where you have to attach the debugger over and over again this is the best workflow that I could ever dream about and I'm a big fan